yours going to be long or do you think you can do it in five minutes? One less. All right, let's go with uh, Bobby for the MOOC, which is down and it is 7.1. Yeah, we have it all here. Do you want to come sit with the microphone, please? Yikes. Can you hear me? Is, is it on? Is it good? Well, we can, we're getting an echo. Turn your, turn your volume off, Jane. Turn your volume off. Turn my, I muted myself. Yeah. Maybe you turn your volume off, too. Is it still doing it? Yes. Yes. We good, Alex? I thought it Okay. No, we're not. I thought I was going crazy. Open volume mixer, it says. Am I standing in front of you? Or is that right now? I'm off here. I'm off. I'm off here. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay, uh, my name is Bobby Kamen, 85 Mount Warner Road in Hadley, and I'm here as the chairperson of the Mosquito Opt-Out Committee. It seems pretty early to be thinking about it, but it is a calendar year vote, uh, and so I'm here tonight to ask the select board representing the town of Hadley uh, with the recommendation of the Board of Health to vote to opt out a mosquito spraying program conducted under the State Reclamation and Control Board SRMCB for the calendar year 2023 is also authorized under the Mass General Laws Chapter 252, Section 2AB2. Uh, we opted out last year. We uh, sent in an application. It was approved, and we're seeking to do that again for 2023. Any comments or questions? I have language here if people want. We have it in our okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve and if anybody wants to discuss. Okay. So um, I have a motion to approve. Is there any further conversation? Do I need to read the... Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion that we state that the town of Hadley, with the recommendation from the Town Board of Health, votes to opt out of the mosquito spraying program conducted under the State Reclamation and Control Board. The SRMBC for calendar year 2023 <coughs> is authorized under Mass General Law, Chapter 252, Section 2A, B, 2. Second. So the, I, but I think, so we can approve all of this, but the state will still decide if they want to do it anyway. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, right. The state would, my understanding and, and in reading the language, they would only spray if there was a, they will not spray, but there would be have to be a health emergency with EEE, with Eastern Equine Encephalitis. There have been no cases at all in the state, or I don't know if the state, but in Hadley. They do it based on the calendar year before. There was only one case of not even human, but they do sample mosquitoes. There was one case, and the Board of Health is not afraid of West Nile in a mosquito, uh, in, in September of this year, but that's it. So we're very low risk, and they prove it quite quite a bit based on the regional and local risk. We're very low risk. Any other questions? And then are people, because I believe people can specifically opt out their properties as well. Yes, they, yes. Any property, farm, um, otherwise can opt out through a process through the state also. It's approved by the state. Mm -hmm. We have a vote, please. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, you too. All right. Two minutes have I consent agenda. Consent agenda. Good idea. Consent agenda. Warrant AP2323V. AP2322INS, AP2322S, AP2322, PR2310, PR2309, AP2321, AP2321S, AP2320S, AP2320. 
minutes from November 2nd and November 16th of 2022, and a declaration of surplus property, the 1984 Case Tractor. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good. All right, we can get ready to start at 6.30. Dan, you want to move up to the microphone, please? I'm waiting. Oh, right. for God's sake. It's 6.30. It's 6.30. All right. We'll start the classification here for the fiscal year 2023. We have our uh, assessor with us. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Yep. the classification hearing for 2023 before we begin the hearing I just want to share a few facts for 2023 our tax levy limit this year is 13 million nine hundred eighty thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars our actual tax levy if we go with a single rate will be thirteen million nine hundred seventy thousand eight hundred and fifty two dollars that's roughly ninety six hundred dollars under what we could raise and that's because the state will not allow us to raise a fraction of a cent. So that works out to about 0.9 cents on the tax rate. Last year, our fiscal 22 residential value was 730,000, 730,730,000 dollars. This year, the 23 residential value is 834,468,000, an increase of almost 14.2% from last year. Our commercial and industrial last year was 323 million, 29,000. This year it's 376 million, 177,000, an increase of almost 16 and a half percent. The average single family home last year was assessed for 366,800. This year it rose to 418,800. That's a $52,000 increase, which is incredible, but the sales in calendar year 22 are showing that it's even higher we're up another eight to ten percent so if they go down this year they'll change for next year uh right now we're up about eight percent eight to ten for from where these values are so we're looking at probably somewhere in the 430s next year uh, the average bill was four thousand four hundred sixty eight dollars last year with a single rate it would have been four thousand six hundred and seven to put it into perspective this year the average bill will be 4833 with a single tax rate if a single rate is adopted the the tax rate will be 1154 uh, please note splitting the rate doesn't raise any additional revenue for the town the assessor's recommendation this year as in the past the assessors are recommending no open space discount no small commercial exemption and no residential ex exemption the assessors are also recommending going back to a single tax rate for fiscal 23. Last year we had said it was a one time, one year split because of the commercial value impact of COVID. Mm -hmm. And that's for the most part gone away this year. Uh, each year you must vote four options, whether to have a split rate, which is the residential factor, whether to give an open space discount, whether to have a residential exemption, or the granting of a small commercial exemption. History of the split tax rate. 
So the split tax rate originated after the passage of two and a half in 1980. Two and a half requires that all properties be valued at full and fair market. In 82, when it took effect, there was, prior to 82, there were a lot of communities that engaged in disproportionate assessment practices. So they, they were assessing com commercial value at 100% and residential at 25%. When it, everything was brought up to 100, the residential tax bill skyrocketed, especially in the, in the cities. So those politicians, they, they feared that they weren't going to get reelected. So they passed special legislation allowing them to raise commercial above the 100 percent, the full, the single tax rate. And at that point, it was up to uh, 150. And in years after that, it went up to 175, and in some cases, double. It's since been scaled back, where it's now limited to 150 percent. This sheet shows what our, how our levy limit is calculated. It's got last year's levy limit base of 12,515,000. We had 18.23 in amended new growth. 312.926 is our 2.5% increase. Our new growth for this year was 123,191. The levy subtotal for this year is 12,953. There's 863,000 in debt exclusions and an additional 163,993 in water sewer exclusions. So our levy limit for this year is 13,980,368. Our levy ceiling, which is the most we could ever raise based on the values right now, is 30,266,000. So we're not in any danger of hitting that any time in the next. Don't guess. A long, <laughs> it's a long time. There are communities where they've, they've exceeded or they're at their levy ceiling. That's when the tax, single tax rate at $25. I think Springfield and Holyoke a few years ago were both at the $25 mark and then the value shot up, so now they're below. So they, they couldn't take the 2.5% increase every year. This sheet shows all of the property values in town based by, by type. Uh, single family, there's 1,687 with a $706 million value. The things to draw attention to here, our taxable value is a billion, a billion two hundred and ten million dollars, and we also have two hundred and fifty-five million dollars in tax exempt. So we're close to a billion and a half now in property value in town. The minimum residential factor for this year is seventy-seven point four six percent. That's the minimum amount of the levy that the residential class and open space class can can pay. You may adopt a residential factor between 1 and 0.7746. A residential factor of 1 would have a single rate of, of 1154. A residential factor of 0.7746 would decrease residential taxes by 22.5%, but it would increase commercial taxes by 50%. Uh, three things to draw your attention to here. The yellow is fiscal 21. We were at 66.48% for residential, 33.5% for commercial and industrial and personal. Last year, those percentages shifted to 69.3% and just under 30.7% for commercial. This year, it's back down to 68.9% for residential and 31.07% for commercial. I would expect over the next few years, it's going to creep closer to the 66%. For the 21 and 22, we had very minimal commercial new growth in town. And there's several projects that are going in now that are going to be multi-million dollar projects coming in. So we should end up getting a, a good jump. And I would expect last year it's probably going to be close, or next year it's going to be closer to 68 and 32 than it is right now. And then the year after probably uh, 67 and, and 33 back to where we normally are. But you can see from the other years, we've always been between 64 and 66 percent on the commercial. This slide shows some local area communities' tax bills for last year. Amherst was 8609 last year. Northampton was 6303. We went up. It was about 260 bucks last year, I believe. Northampton 
I think went up 500 last year and Amherst went up, I believe it was over eight. This year they've already set their rates and Northampton is going up four plus and Amherst went up another eight, which is really a lot compared to what we're paying here. Uh, most of the communities that have a split rate, even with the split rate, they're paying pretty much close to what, what we're paying here. Our bill would be 49. With the single rate, our average bill will be 48.33 for this year. Uh, if we had a single rate last year, it would be a $200 increase, but the shift is going to throw about another 150 to 160 on top of that. So it's, it's actually going to go up about 360 this year, which is still less than Amherst and Northampton. And I know people don't like to hear comparisons to other communities, but that's we're, why, we're why, in the range. That's why everybody's moving here. Yeah, we're going up 5%, 5, 6%. Five, and the but local area is anywhere between three and but six. But every, every other community has, their assessed value has gone up. Yeah, everybody's so gone that, up. That didn't change anywhere. Um, what's gone changed is that we're going down if we consider doing a single tax base for everybody compared to what it was last year. Yeah, the commercial is going to drop. I mean, their values went up slightly more than the residential went up. Mm -hmm. When we proposed the split rate last year, we were not assuming that prices were going to go up as much. 20 plus percent for residential in one year, which is pretty much unheard of. Yeah. Last year, I think we went up, I think last year we only went up eight or 9,000 on the 360 or $59,000 and, and, and bill. Which I have been kind of stupid on this, but the part of the state that mandates a reassessment at 100% evaluation. Ah, uh, prop two and a half. Okay. Yeah, we have to do, it's a five, it went from a three year to a five year program. This actually was our fifth year, the state came in and did a full review, which is why we're holding this hearing now yeah. rather than back four, four or five weeks ago. We're actually, our last reval, we held the hearing on December 6th. So we're, we're right on schedule mm -hmm. for this. Dan, you know what I think would be helpful for people who are listening? Um, and, and maybe I know Sue's on here too, but could you just kind of walk through the timing of things so you know we have the classification hearing now um assuming it goes you know we accept the recommendations of the assessors um you know basically the the tax rate is a calculation that's backed into right. the 11 dollars and whatever cents but then from a practical standpoint people at home want to know well what does that mean for my tax bill uh, if you vote a single rate tonight or a split rate, which I'm hoping you go with the single rate. The recap sheet is basically done. I finished that up with the town accountant just before we came over here. That will go in sometime tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning to the DOR. Their turnaround now is two to three days. So we should have a tax rate approval either Friday or Monday, at which point we'll do the data bridge from our assessment software to our tax billing software, and Susan will print the bills up sometime early next week and get ready to stuff them out to mail them out right around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So when will people see the first increase February. tax bill? Uh, the bill that's due February 1st. Right. So if it if your house is going up 360, your bill will be 180 more in February and 180 more in May. But a big mistake that a lot of people make is they take that 180 increase and multiply it times four and they come in and say, my bill's going up 720. Because if they look at their May bill, versus the bill that they paid in August, that bill actually went down because it's only half of what they paid as a whole last year. And that, that's why I want to make sure every year there are a lot of questions about that. So just the, the, the next two billing cycles will pick up the right. incremental increase. Yeah, and then it'll drop for August and November, but mm -hmm. then it'll jump up again in, in January. Right. And we have on our website a book well, it's not a book, it's a program, uh, Word document that has the 96 sales that took place in 2021 and through the first eight months of 2022, 
with a, a photo of the property, the address, the map and lot, the sale date, and its sale price. So people can actually look at that and compare that to their homes. Because so many people come in and they just zoom in on the, the paper sheet that we give them with the sale prices, and they go, the three that are most comparable to mine are the three lowest. Mm -hmm. And they don't actually look at the pictures. But that, that'll be a helpful tool so people can actually go online and look at it. And we've got a printed copy in the office if somebody wants to come in and look at it. Uh, this slide gives the last three fiscal years the values. Residential in 21 was 359.2. Last year was 366.8. And this year it's 418.2. The bills were 4202, 4468, and they'll be 4832 this year with a single rate. So it's roughly a 14.9% increase. Commercial, the average value was 765.9 in 21. That dropped to 686.8 last year. And then this year it's up to 812. So it's, the, their bill has remained somewhat constant. It's 9191, 9237, and 9379. Some are gonna go up, some are gonna drop this year. Um, there are still a few properties that are negatively impacted by COVID. And those values are still a little bit repressed. Those might go up next year. But DOR looked at it and said we were fine where we were with the values. They only saw a 2% increase from 21, where residential is up 14.9 for the actual tax bill. Uh, this gives us tax rate split options between 100% and 150 in 5% increments. We're recommending the, the 100%, which is the 1154 tax rate for both. At 150, residential would be 894 and commercial would be 1731, which is a really big jump. Some of the big places would end up paying a lot more. Uh, this one, you have an option if you go with a split rate to shift chapter land into the residential class. Any farm parcel that's not in chapter would still be subject to the commercial, industrial, and personal rate. And this slide shows two parcels, a non-chapter parcel with two and a half acres that's a buildable lot would pay $1,652 this year with a single rate. And the chapter parcel that's five acres would pay $6,347. Uh, other options you have, open space discount, you can grant up to 25% discount on parcels classified as open space. 20 years ago, our DOR rep recommended, and they, they did this, I think, across the state, taking virtually everything out of open space and just treating it as if it's residential or commercial and giving it a discount for, like Lake Warner would be a prime example, or the swampland around it, just giving it a bigger discount in value because it's technically not worth a whole lot of money to do away with open space as a class. So right now we have nothing classified as open space. Uh, residential exemption, you can take and grant a 35% exemption to all owner-occupied properties in town. That's 35% of not their assessed value, but the average residential value in town. So what that does, whoop, there we go. Uh, it's all owner-occupied. What that does though is the, the tax Taxes raised by the residential class stay in the residential class. So the tax rate would jump if you granted this exemption. So if you granted the full 35% exemption, any home assessed for 520,000, 600 or higher would pay more in taxes than if we didn't grant the exemption. So it basically shifts the tax burden from higher end homes or from lower assessed homes to higher end properties. Uh, the small commercial exemption is an option you can have. We're jumping the wrong way. In order to get the small commercial exemption, you get 10%. This is parcel specific, so you would get 10% of your assessed value off. But in order to qualify, your assessed value has to be under a million dollars, and you need less than 10 annualized employees. We get a list every year from the state of people that have 10 or fewer employees, businesses in town. 
right now there's fifty properties that would qualify for this and in the the full report it, it amounts to very little dollar wise because just like the residential exemption anybody not getting it would pay more but it, it's the rate would go up about a penny and people would save you've got 50 people that would properties that would save about 10 percent and everybody else would pay a penny or two pennies more on the tax rate uh, pros of a split rate lower <clears throat> residential taxes increased residential property values the cons of a split rate if we raise commercial, industrial, and personal taxes, we're going to get more abatement applications. More applications means increased expenses to the town. A split rate has to be voted every year. So any override funded through a split rate could be flipped back if they went from a split rate to a single rate the next year, and the property, the residential property owners would still bear the impact of it. Uh, this is a... These are older studies, but they, they pretty much still hold up. The, the key one, the first one, the American Farmland Trust, for every dollar we get in in taxes from residential, we expend $1.16 in services. For every dollar we take in in commercial and industrial property, we expend 29 cents in services. And farmland and open land, we expend about 35 cents. And the reason that that seems odd that it would be 35 cents, but that takes into account chapter land. So if somebody's got a, a 20 acre field that's in chapter, they may be paying as little as $200 a year in taxes on it. So the cost for police, roads, and fire, and other services, that builds up real quick. Even if it's a vacant lot, it's still going to have some cost to it. This slide has an old, well, it's a combination of studies that were done, but it shows communities around here. Deerfield is probably similar to us. Uh, in 92, they were 1.16 for every dollar. And in, nine, in 2009, they were $1.14 for commercial, or for residential. 38 cents for commercial and 51 cents in 2009. And the open space, it, it pretty much matches up with, with the other studies. Uh, our recommendations. The board is recommending adopting a single rate for 03 or 23. No open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. And this just reiterates the levy capacity. We'll have $9,516 in unused, and that's due to rounding. And then any questions <coughs> that you might have. Thank you for your presentation and all the work that you do, Dan. We appreciate it. Thanks. I'll make a motion to accept the recommendations of the assessors relative to a single tax rate and uh, not um, no open. Yeah, and then not um, adopting the exemptions. Yeah, it would be to uh, a residential factor of one point zero. I'll second that motion. Your motion. Questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Dan, thanks. for your. Thanks, Dan. Good job. And you'll get an email probably Friday or Monday with the tax rate recap. Great. Saying that it was approved. Thank you. And, Jane, can I just. Um, just very quickly ask for um, something to come onto the agenda. I just wanted to mention it while I could see uh, Kishore uh, Parmer is here with us. Um, we've been having some conversation about forming uh, basically like a Hadley Business Council that might be advisory that the town could tap into um, and also to promote um, maybe, you know, working with the Chamber of Commerce just to get information out about things like the tax classification hearing and feedback about doing business in Hadley. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Is that something that we could discuss at a upcoming select board meeting? I think we absolutely could. Huh? Can you put that you on? Like on the 21st? Do you want it on the 21st or in the first of the year? Can you do the 21st? Uh, actually, I'm on vacation no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a oh. Kishore behind you there. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. And you have that, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. I'm sorry, and the assessors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so now we will go down the regular agenda. Uh, are there any public comments? Public comments, anybody in the audience raising a hand? Anybody Sorry. on the? No, nope, nobody waving. Okay, no public comments. We've done consent, we've done mosquito opt-out, we'll do the Walmart Plaza bus stop. Paul should be here any second. Who? Paul Burns from PBTA. All right, then we'll back off of that one and we will look at the license renewals. Huh? Okay. Um, so this year we sent all our renewals uh, for November 1st, we received um, everyone on the list back by the deadline of November 30th. I have done something a little different this year where I have broken them up in the Excel spreadsheet by type of license. Um, I thought that y'all might find this a little more uh, easy to visualize all of them. So um, all of the licenses are complete. All of the um, businesses are in good standing with the town. And I would ask that you um, recommend them, or uh, would ask you to vote on them for renewal by their categories. So uh, on all, for all of the alcohol licenses, and then a separate vote for common vicular and so forth. Did you say there were a couple that needed to come off? I've already removed them. Um, I, I removed them because I didn't want any mistakes made in having them approved this evening. Um, I will be bringing the rest of the list to you, including most of my auto dealers on the 21st. Um, I tend to give them a little bit more time just because um, their only requirements are sort of to the town, whereas with liquor licenses, they have state reporting that's required as well. Are there uh, crossovers between these different categories on the Excel sheet? Oh, um, that is somebody who has an alcohol license might also be under amusement or theater. That is correct. And actually, Molly did just catch something. I'm going to ask that y'all remove um, the Young Men's Club. Um, there's some things that I need to finish working on with their licenses. I removed it from alcohol, but I did not catch it on my very clever list that I thought was going to make everybody so much happier. Yeah. So it's also on Common Vic and Entertainment. And entertainment. Mm -hmm. So they'll just need to be excluded from those. And they'll be on, on December 21st. Yeah. I got carried away because they have a liquor license. So, so I would recommend that y'all approve the list with the removal of the Young Men's Club for uh, the Common Vicular and Entertainment for this time. Are there any questions for Jennifer? So you're going to do them by categories now? I would like you to. If, if, if I mean, it's your pleasure. It's how you would like to do them. So there, I would say one thing, and I, Jennifer talked to me about this. I have a class two dealer's license, so I would have to abstain from everything if the, everything was piled together because I don't feel it's appropriate for me to vote for the class the, the auto dealer licenses. So if we do it this way, the way Jennifer's got it set up, I can vote on everything but the auto dealer's licenses. And Good it doesn't. point. So I'll make a motion to approve the alcohol licenses as presented. May I have a second? Second. second. Go ahead. Second by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes. Make a motion to approve all the common VIC licenses as presented. Except, Minus Young Men's Club? Except for the Young Men's Club. Second. Thank you. Second by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes. Make a motion to approve all the Class 1 and Class 2 auto dealer licenses as presented. May I have a second? Second. Second by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain, abstain from that one. Abstention 1. Okay. Motion to approve all the entertainment licenses as presented with the exception of the Young Men's Club. 
second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposition? Thank you. Motion. motion to approve all the automatic amusements as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, motion to approve the theater and skating rinks as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and you bring others back to us in two weeks. Yes, I will. Um, I'm still working with some places, um, and we'll get them all set, and we'll get everybody on, and hopefully have a clean wrap up this year. That is my goal, and not to bring anybody to y'all on January 1st. I'll knock on wood. I haven't done it in six years, but I know I can this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Did Richie have something? Was he for a license? All right. Here, so we'll go back no. to 7.2. Huh? The Walmart person. No. That which Richie, was he here for licenses? No. No. He's here for something else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Paul, seven. you want to to the seat right here? This is Paul Burns from Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Paul, your title, because mm -hmm. all I know you is former board member, <laughs> former troublemaker. Um, I have some brief, some quick handouts for PowerPoint, which I think is easier for you. Um, it's a five-slide five PowerPoint. Just to PowerPoint is good it. for our, our remote audience. Okay. So who should get the I'll, I'll, Do you want me to do it? Okay. I believe the title is Hampshire Mall Bus Stop. Okay. Good side, Alex, please. Yeah, I gotta get that. Mountain Farms, I'm sorry. Wrong mall. Wrong, wrong mall. Yeah, other <laughs> side of the street. We, we have stops on both, so. Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure, I could just give you the brief overview once the PowerPoint is up um, as to what's going on there and, okay. and why. <clears throat> I'd like a bus stop at the PV. TA over in Hatfield just at the If only they were a member community. Uh, it's just right over the line. It's really <laughs> I, I know it's so close. Yeah. Are they sort of heard of? Uh they must be, yes. Yeah. I, I'd have to yeah, they are because the, the, the Franklin Regional. The yeah. the bus the, the Franklin the Regional y. bus goes through there and then connects with us at the Academy of Music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Are we ready? Okay, so uh, but we have been working on a relocation of the bus stop in the vicinity of Walmart at Mountain Farms Mall. And if you can go to the second slide. Actually, I'm glad we're not ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. That one's a nightmare. <laughs> did you hear what he said? No, I did not. He said, PowerPoint is stupid. Thank you, Alex. No offense to you. We, we have had similar conversations say, over the years. So. <laughs> and may, can I share it? I think you should be able to. Come on. Nope, I go back. Are you in Zoom or? I'm in Zoom and I was sharing my screen from Zoom. You might have to stop and then start again. Only from experience. I have no, I'll take it. been this road a few too many times. So if we could go to slide two. So this is a depiction of the area as it was prior to, I guess today actually, I think the new stop, uh, the implementation was today. 
So if you look at, at uh, the map, you'll see the two bus icons in, kind of in the center of the map. One of those is at what used to be the Manny site. And the second one is at the Walmart, uh, on the Walmart side of the street. If you'll recall several years ago, the Mall Plaza was redesigned um, in anticipation, I believe is what I was told at the time, of the Route 9 reconstruction by MassDOT, which of course at that point was three years, three plus years away. The mall developer, <clears throat> for whatever reason, determined that we would no longer need bus stops in the plaza. And so they designed them basically out of the plaza and expected everybody to go to uh, Route 9 to pick up the bus. In that particular plaza, it's just not realistic to expect shoppers to walk from Walmart across that plaza dodging all the cars and all the traffic in that plaza to get back to Route 9. Um, so we pushed back at that point in time. This was in the fall of 2019. We closed the bus stop temporarily, both bus stops in the mall, because they're just not safe the way they were configured. Uh, the stop on the far side by, uh, what's the name of the, uh, the, the fitness Orange store. Theory. Orange Theory, thank you. Uh, but the stop there used to be on a sidewalk that was there when Manny's was there. And once they reconfigured it, the sidewalk was removed. I think it was uh, like three lanes of traffic total. There was a turning lane or a passing lane, and then there were two lanes of traffic. So there was room for a bus to get through, room for vehicles, and room to pull over and stop. When they reconfigured it, there was no room on either side. Uh, and initially, we had tried to negotiate with the mall and received no response. So we closed the bus stop in September of 2019, and of course that didn't sit well with Walmart, who immediately intervened, uh, and Walmart agreed to build a pad for us on the side of the garden shop. And the mall management at that time agreed that they, we would uh, resume negotiations in the spring because it was just getting too late in the year to pour concrete and to repair or provide an alternate stop for the second side. Our plan at that time was to put the stop behind Walmart uh, in somewhere in the receiving area because there really isn't a lot of room in that plaza and there's not really no place to put it on the opposite side where it is now. So, you know, of course, COVID hit in March of 2020 and that really derailed all the plans at that point. We just, there was no ridership, there was, uh, the routes were running, but there was no issue with traffic in the, in the mall at that point in time and no issue with riders. You know, two years later now, we are beginning to see ridership return to between 65 and 70% of pre-pandemic levels. There's a fair amount of traffic again. All of the same issues that were there before existed or exist now. We reached out to the mall in May. Um, we were hoping to resolve this issue and just have the bus stop put behind the plaza uh, in back of Walmart. And if you go to the next slide, the proposed location, we can go to the third slide. I guess I skipped ahead of myself as I was talking. So the, you'll see the stop in front of Orange, Orange Theory. Uh, that's going to go away. So, and that blue circle on the bottom, that will be the return stop for the bus coming in. So the bus will cross from the J.C. Penney Plaza, turn down South Maple Street, come back into the back entrance at Walmart, and then stop on that side. There's no construction at this point, and we're not expecting construction from the mall at this point. Obviously, it's, it's winter, and it's going to be difficult to do much now. Uh, the walkway from the garden shop stop, which is actually a little bit higher, that map has it a little bit too low. It's exactly right in front of the garden shop. <coughs> uh, they did pour a decent sized concrete pad. We can, uh, not on that side, I'm sorry, in the front of Walmart. If you'll see the blue icon there and then just, yeah. Four, yeah. And then in advance of that, right at the corner is where the bus stop actually is. Right there. Google's not always great at assigning stops to specific locations. It's usually off a few feet. Um, in the interim, we are hoping that riders will be able to walk on that path there, or if they need to, they can use the, um, the, the road to get down to the back and then get to the bus stop in the back. And that was implemented today. However, we got some feedback from drivers and we had to make a, a slight change for the Christmas season because the traffic between the two malls is just incredible, as you probably know, and I, in me and my infinite wisdom, I'm not sitting there watching it. So if you could go to the next slide. For the next four weeks, that is an awesome slide. Did we lose it? I don't think there's a Should be a slide five. It's the end of the slide show. And it is not, oh, well, I apologize. Why? 
Is that okay? That is the that is the one. Okay. We'll just we'll just do this like okay. everybody can see. We'll be fine. So for the next four weeks until January eighth, we will use this configuration and all the stops, both inbound and outbound, will be at the Walmart stop just for the four weeks of the Christmas season because we simply can't we can't guarantee the bus will be able to cross South Maple Street at this time of year. Once that you know, once we're past Christmas, we will go back to the configuration I showed previously. Um, and we have a tentative agreement with mall management to construct a, a walkway path to the back of the Walmart store and then use that bus stop across the plaza. So after it's picked up, it's going to go back out and then it's going north on South Maple Street. So it'll make a circle, basically. Um, well, when they pick up from there, they actually cross the road and go into yes. J.C. Penney. Right. Oh, they're uh, going to Penny's. On the inbound trip, on the trip into UMass. Right. On the trip back to you, back to Northampton, they will cross from Penny's and go up South Maple yes. Street. Yes. Okay. Thank then you. come down Russell Street and right. then yes, go right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, is the simple answer to your question. <clears throat> I overthought that one a little bit. Isn't there a stop right in front of Chipotle? There is, but for somebody shopping at Walmart and then walking with bags, or especially somebody who has a mobility issue, uh, okay. getting from Walmart to Chipotle is a significant challenge and especially now that even with the, the lighting that's there it's just not particularly easy to cross route nine mm -hmm. so the challenge has always been and even with the reconfiguration you know we're looking at it we don't think that even with the, the newly reconfigured route nine it's going to be the best option for passengers as long as we continue to stop at walmart we think we should and walmart also would like us to stay there and i think just for both of those plazas there's so much traffic and they're just, they're big enough that it's not an easy track, easy track to up to Route 9. And especially if you're carrying bags, if you're older or you have any kind of a mobility impairment, it's just not gonna work for you. Even even without all that, those issues, it, it could be dangerous. So <laughs> yes, I, I it's a little bit like a game of Frogger crossing the yeah. mall, yes. Yeah, for sure. Quick feet. Yeah. So what do we need to do? So this, it's, it wasn't, it was more of an update, but also um, I think Chief Spanky may have some questions and possibly Tommy. So it was more letting the public know this is happening and why it's happening, but also um, for me, most importantly, that you, you five are aware of this. Okay. Chief, do you have any comments? Sure. So I just, I haven't seen this yet. Mm -hmm. The one that I saw was uh, the addition of Jersey barriers along the Walmart uh, yes. Garden Center. Yep. Is that still happening? It, it yeah. can happen. It's not a requirement for us. Okay. And if that's a concern for the town, I don't, think we, yeah, I, don't, I don't think we need to have it. Um, mm -hmm. For our purposes, the requirement, the only thing that I'm really asking for from the mall or from the town or whoever is gonna you know, accept the responsibility is to make sure that the walkway to the back bus stop is clear. I don't want to be forcing people to go back into the street to go travel, whatever it is, 300 feet to go back to the bus stop to avoid being in an unsafe bus stop just to create an additional unsafe situation. But that, that, uh, that landscaped area between the garden shop, if you can go back, I think it's slide Is that three. us? I, don't, is it, that, I think it's the mall. Yeah, I was going to say it's but private. But if we can also just get a little bit of commitment from the town as well to say, look, we'll make sure that you know, we plow as well as we can there so that we're not having any, any significant issues. What? Well, we have, we have some other issues there because we've actually had to move your bus stop in the past mm -hmm. because inside the garden center, we have propane storage. Okay. And so we literally had to move it from the north end yep. into the center. And now we're moving the bus stop into the center. So we're going to have a request because we have everybody flicking their cigarettes and they're all getting flicked into the propane tank oh. in the same area because they were, everybody was standing on the grass in that area. So do you need us to move it further down? Well, I'm, I'm just, um, I mean, we can, we can certainly make a request of Blue Rhino or wherever their exchange program is to relocate it to a different spot. Mm -hmm. It's just, is there a concrete walkway there now? There is nothing there it's now. Nothing. It's, it's, uh, right now it's landscaped, but there's a pretty, it's a pretty heavy packed dirt walkway. Okay, because we had actually requested them to complete their egress pathway on um, the lower end of there's an egress pathway <laughs> out of the garden center. You can see that little small piece of concrete yep, yep. right there. That's yep. actually supposed to go to grade, and we actually had a wheelchair that went off of it and rolled over because it's supposed to actually go to the. Um, so we've had discussions with them on that. That hasn't been completed. 
And as far as the location where you want to stop on that access road, mm -hmm. that's a pretty that's a priority access road for us because our fire department connection is actually down on the right hand side. Okay. So if we have a situation where I'm assuming it's not a long stop, it's not. No, they're in there for a minute or so. Right yeah, no, no, there's no way over there. So we were just concerned because the plan I saw, um, they had those Jersey barriers cutting into that lane of the path, the, the pathway going to the, you know, the Hampshire Mall. So we have so we have so many accidents there as it is. Mm -hmm. We're concerned of that people having to come around those Jersey barriers going into the other lane. Yeah, um, no, I mean, yeah, that's not a requirement for me. That was something that they offered. Okay. I, they also have you parking your bus, turning, just taking a right off of that and parking your bus there, and then folks would access that Jersey barrier area there. Yeah, no, we're not. Okay. <laughs> I hadn't seen that level of detail. Yeah, that was. They actually submitted a. Poll. We just. I just got a drawing from Carolyn on Friday. So yeah, I'm, I, that was the one I had done. I am I'm happy to work with you on that. We do not. We do not need the Jersey barriers. Okay. We just need a clear path to get to the back. Um, and you know, we can certainly work with the mall, and we, we don't have to be. We can build a pad on that grassy area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I we can't. They, you know, they would need to do it for us, but we would not be opposed to that. They also did indicate that they were going to look at some other options on the opposite side of the street to see if they could find some space to put a bus stop. I don't see it. I, I can't imagine a, you know, a mall giving up parking, but if they gave up three or four parking spaces, we could certainly put a bus stop in several locations there. We would love to work with you on that. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I know the building commissioner and I both were concerned when we heard about it, and so I appreciate Carolyn getting me involved. Oh, no, ab absolutely. We're more than happy to work with you. Okay. We have the building inspector on, too. Tommy, do you have anything to add? I'm in, I totally agree with the chief, and I'm you know, in support with him. That's what I'm, uh, I'm for. Okay. Oh, and we're, we're happy to work with you on that. We, the ultimate goal here is to make this as safe as possible, so we want to address all any safety concerns that are coming up uh, and make sure that we find a solution that's acceptable to the town and to our passengers. James, so what James Scott's do? on. I don't know if Scott had a question about Scott. The, do you have anything plowing. from DPW? Uh, good evening. Uh, kind of yes. Uh, first of all, I, I would recommend to the board that uh, we don't uh, do any stone removal on the property. It is private property to begin with, and we could put ourselves in a spot with that. Uh, Especially since it's on wetlands and they had to move where they plowed. But we, well, we don't plow just, there just now. Why would we start general, now? I would suggest that uh, we don't get involved with any snow removal on private property. No, I'm just saying that we don't. We don't now. Yeah. Why yeah. We wouldn't start, Scott, so don't right. worry about I, that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, he, he had a comment yeah. about... I, 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 had, mis I had misspoken. Clear path. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, Bill Dwyer, I see you looking like you'd like to speak. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to mention from the planning board perspective that Mountain Farms Mall is already over the top on parking. Um, they're into transfer of development rights to squeeze in more parking. So unfortunately, I don't think they really have any parking spaces to, uh, to donate. That, that was kind of my thought as well. That I, I found it hard to, I, I worked in planning for a few years myself, so I found it very hard to believe that any developer is going to give up parking spaces, but. It, they, they're, they're beyond their limit. Uh, the, the only reason, we're, we're not counting some of the uh, dead space in the curvature of the mall toward uh, their parking requirement, but they, they far exceeded what they're allowed. Okay. Thank you. Any other um, comments? Anybody else have anything they'd like to add? No. no. Thank good. you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for your input. You're welcome. Have a wonderful night. Have a good Thank Christmas. You also. Thank you. <laughs> I would have given it back, Paul. All right. Seven. <laughs> 7.4 water abatement 200 bay road who would like to speak to this susan? i would susan oh yes. i thought you said i would no, susan, no, who? Would susan would not who um, would like to speak? um john 
Prince of Kinshla. Kinshla. John is here from the property and he uh, is the person who submitted the, the farm. request. Mm -hmm. um, John, I see you there. If you would like Hello. to speak. There you go. So, uh, thanks for considering this. Um, the situation is pretty spelled out in the application, but um, the the property has two different water meters. One's an agricultural meter, and the other one is for the house. And um, unfortunately, the the meter that's for the house is tied into a hydrant, a frost-free hydrant that's um, a good distance away from any of the agricultural hydrants, and that one was used to water a pasture that had been seeded in the spring. So. Um, that is why the water bill got driven up so high, or the use was driven up so high, because the pasture was drying out into a drought. So it was watered, and then the water bill came, and um, we realized that uh, that was a big mistake, expensive mistake. So I guess I'm just asking for, um, for you to consider maybe dropping down the the rate to like the middle um, middle ground rate rather than the um, as a, the so-called conservation rate that's on the high end. Submitted John's uh, request to DPW Director McCarthy, and I also asked uh, Susan uh, Glasky, the collector, to preside, present y'all or provide y'all with a history of that uh, water account and Scott and is on here and he's able to, to give y'all more information but I did attach his letter into the board docs and Jane I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion okay. I've had some dealings with Mr. Kitchell okay uh, Scott you do, you you do have Scott and yeah Kim on uh good evening everyone uh I would recommend that you do not do this abatement. Uh, first, we don't really know how much water went through the meter to water the lawn. There's no way to uh, know that for sure. And secondly, uh, at that in that time frame where we were in a water use restriction, and that uh, domestic water through the house should not have been used for watering, anyways. So I would recommend not giving the abatement. Oh, that's the that fancy horse mm -hmm. So for those purposes, I'm going to make a motion to deny the abatement for this property. I will second that. We have a motion in a second. Is there any further discussion? Could I address yes, sure. some of his Sure. So the, um, it wasn't a lawn that was being watered, it was a pasture um, for horses. And um, the historical use on that meter is pretty low. It's usually around $150 a quarter or 120 a quarter. So this was an exceptionally large difference in the cost. I understand that um, nobody wants to set a precedent here, but um, it wasn't a malicious attempt. It was, uh, you know, an agricultural use just tied to the wrong meter, which is all the same water just going through a different meter. So um, it's my understanding that agricultural uses are exempt from the watering ban. Um, so that's. What That's what I would uh, like to put on the record. I I don't technically know if horses count on that ban, or, or you know. Jane, Jane, he is he is correct that agriculture is exempt from the water use restriction, but but seeing that there is an agriculture meter on the property, that's the one that should have been used. Uh, however, I just feel that it went through the residential meter and 
we should not allow the abatement because of that and we were in the water use restriction okay is there any further discussion i have a motion in a second do you know i was just going to ask mr kinch that did, if, do you know which is which and where the water comes from for both of them for for the future i do this one was used because it was several hundred feet closer to the area okay. probably 500 feet closer to the area where the pasture was so we simply just didn't think about it <laughs> it was uh you know it was one of those things that you do and you don't actually consider the fact that um it's on the wrong meter so nor did i realize that the um the rate was so dramatically different from and, and on a graduated scale. So that's why I'm just requesting a middle ground on it. So it's not a complete abatement, it's just dropping the highest rate down to the middle rate, which um, seems reasonable to me, but uh, you guys are the ones that do this every day, so I'll leave it up to you. Is that a newer agricultural meter? No. Is it newer? Yeah, agricultural meter. Scott, how long has that agricultural meter been in there? <clears throat> uh, I don't have the exact information uh, dates in front of me, Jane, but it has been in there for a good amount of time. I believe Susan years. We're talking, that. not weeks. Yeah, years. Thank yes. you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. I believe Susan can answer it. So uh, Susan, did you want to parts? say something? All right, I'm going to stop being a jerk. Actually, Kim is. Kim is on. I think Kim wants to say Kim. something. Okay. Prepared to, to discuss either. All right, Kim. Sorry. I, I'm not sure exactly what the question is. Can you uh, elaborate uh, what type of uh, question? He, are you he had indicated that he wasn't sure, um, or he didn't, he wasn't aware about the um, differences in prices, and so I had asked if it was a new meter. Uh, no, not. I don't believe so. This meter has been in there for a number of years. Um, there is, like I said, there is an agricultural meter on site and there is a residential meter on site and they both have uh, years of history. So uh, the issue that, um, that I'm looking at is the meter that is used for agricultural is flagged as an agricultural meter. Um, the history that I printed um, and attached to the email for you folks shows that which meter is an agricultural meter, which meter is a residential, and the rates for the billing are clearly listed on the right side of the bill that is issued, that the agricultural rate is a flat one rate versus the residential rate, which is a tiered based on usage. So the more you use, the higher the rate is that's being, that's being charged. Just checking. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of denying the application? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Moving on to 7.5, UMass Temporary Student Housing Support Recognition Payment. Do you want to read this? Do you want me to read it? Sure. No, I can, I can uh, Go ahead. explain what that's about. Good. That is, as you know, Econ Lodge has been used for this fall for overflow for students at UMass. And uh, UMass recognizes that is lost revenue to the town, why they're utilizing it. And so uh, Dan Zadonik, the assessor, um, Tony Morales from, Morales from UMass and myself met and discussed it. and. Uh, UMass is um, offering the, the $30,000 to Hadley for that lost revenue. So I didn't know if you had any other questions before I submit that to UMass. So this is 30000 that we didn't have in the budget, correct? That we didn't have in the budget. Right. So this is new money for us this year. Mm. I'd have to ask uh, Linda that. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. The, you're asking if it's new money. Or right. what, I don't think we anticipated it's, it's, it. It's above I mean, this is found money. This isn't money that we were right. planning on. This no. is new new money in addition to what we are budgeted mm. for. It's an offset, Carolyn, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's an offset. Well, it's a, we're getting 40,000. We we're not getting, so yes. th this is what we were getting because we were losing that revenue. 
So had the okay. town looked at income from hotel room tax? Yes, that's what that was. Yeah. Which is what this is in lieu of, basically. Yeah. Dan had was a it, number. This is the number that UMass came back with. Was Dan, was that number that was not produced by hotel use tax, but by this, considered in the budgeting process? Were we counting on money from the hotels? Uh, we don't calculate it by individual money. I understand. Dan is the one who spent more time trying to, uh, or, or uh, figuring out what this particular <laughs> location would would contribute to the larger one so we didn't actually calculate it that way but um yeah we didn't do the calculations in that way. we were basing it on the year before but i think that um, dan just uh, did a deeper dive on this to find out what the contribution of that amount uh, <coughs> that we were projecting would have come from this one location mm -hmm. and then uh, didn't he determine um i that it was a 40 it was about we 40, were maybe 40, not getting 000. in forty thousand we dollars yeah. i don't know whether i don't know how he did that if that was based on full occupancy or or some historical um occupancy level but um as i understood it then the thirty thousand was contributed towards the forty thousand loss so, and i see susan's so this there is gonna get I, us who probably has talked with dan about it even yeah, more is he in his meeting though is is so is, yeah. are you saying that this is going to get us closer to like a net to a net, not, not zero, but a flat instead of having a deficit at the end yes. of the year? Yeah, okay. the UMass is not, um, they're not obligating they to pay us anything, right. so this was a good faith negotiation that took right. place. Okay. It was a gift. That we anticipated. We didn't we anticipate hoped for it. That we hoped for, we hoped but for. <laughs> it will at the end of the year so it's not like oh we have extra thirty thousand dollars it's no. we're anticipating a loss because this is not an occupancy Correct. and this is what they're giving us to get and, and that's not necessarily an actual loss that might be a loss uh less of a rise than <laughs> when we I mean, yeah. well, I mean that's what we're <laughs> I, so do you need a, a motion <laughs> Carolyn? no i don't need a motion uh, if you yeah, if right? you wanted me to go back with any other questions or anything else i just wanted to make sure you were aware of that that took place it's good just say thank you. Yep. Yeah. thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you i will do that all right let's quickly get through uh select board members items for future discussion molly's already brought up one about the chamber potential sorry i didn't hear you jane molly has already brought up yep, something I read it. there something i would like to look into and i've talked to the two chiefs about this is um trying to do something similar to our neighboring towns about having a rental a, uh, a rental registry which would help um, the town know where um, inspections needed to be made because they're often concerns about student housing or tenant housing and also um, whether housing is being over saturated with use if a if a property is set for three bedrooms and they have 20 people living in it that's not good for a septic system and that kind of thing could be picked up if we had a rental registry which included money which would pay for money for inspections so I would like to figure out how to pursue doing that. I thought we had something on the books already that you couldn't have any more than uh, four. four unrelated people. I had rental property and you couldn't have more than four unrelated persons in the home. But we have no record of who has the properties and any way to check that they are following well, the We law. do know who owns the property and if they're not living there, we have that on record. Well, we do, but this would have the Springs owners. It into the light and who's going to follow this? The Who's owners. Job? The owners would have to pay a sufficient fee that it would let. Uh, who's going to Who's services. going to garner all of this information? This is something that the building inspector is interested in. Um, they're doing it in Amherst, and I think we were talking about the fact that they've kind of got the kinks out over there, so we wouldn't have to recreate the wheel. Uh, but I, I just think love following Amherst's. Well, well, like I said, they've they got have a lot more they have though, significant rental me properties. Me Jane, you're just asking for it to be discussed, I right? Want it to be right. discussed, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. I won't be here the 21st, we would, so that would be great. We would include the building inspector. Absolutely. 
and, so, and the chief. And the fire chief yeah. and, and the, the police, police chief. chief. One more job for you, Mike. Isn't that wonderful? We've been, we actually have been discussing this because we, we would like to assess the cost to fire the responses to a lot of these houses because we go to a lot with false alarms, firearms, uh, we pretty much know already where those houses are. The issue is if they had to register, there would be a fee that would help cover the expenses yeah. of the services of inspection. Mm -hmm. So you're going to charge the homeowners who already pay taxes a fee to register? If they're taking yes. in to rent their houses. To rent their yeah. houses. Yes. And that, that's Does that just include the people that do business. Airbnb? Yeah. So be. because this is, is an on That's this a agenda, uh, chair, sorry, well, we should this talk is about not that. on the right. agenda. Yeah. So yeah. I would, okay, I would like to put yeah. this on the agenda. I will please. put it on the, it, let's go are for you January. immediate future? I'm just starting to look at the 21st is getting a little busy. Let's go to January. So let's go to, if you're okay with that, we'll go to that. January. And I think that there are other items that we've brought up in the past that haven't gotten onto the agenda, so maybe we could go back and review those review up. some of okay. those too and see if all we right. can get those on and again january february is fine. fine right all right um any select board have any serious liaison reports to be made other items not anticipated town administrator report i do it there's a great report sitting on my desk so okay. i'm going to do this <laughs> no i'm going to do this as quick this is the disadvantage of not having the meeting in town hall but um, I, 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 I'm going to do a little bit from memory because just to give you an update on a couple of things. Um, we did hear from uh, Guilford Mooring at the DPW in Amherst that uh, we did receive a um, funding from Community One Stop for uh, the sewer design for connecting Amherst and Hadley sewer. So that's, that's just the design, but it's a start. I know that's been something that you have all been interested in for quite some time. So that was good news. We just got that today. Um, we also, uh, you have seen, I hope, some of the correspondence is going back and forth between Senator Comerford, um, Representative Carey, and you all about the feedback that we provided, the concerns you had about the Hawk pedestrian signal. So those are going back and forth. I'm still getting them as we're speaking. Uh, her, one of the things that Joe is looking for, Senator Comerford, is um, she was hoping to meet on site to have a more in-depth discussion. Um, I had replied, I think if you had seen that, we were hoping to have it at a select board. But if I misspoke, I wanna get feedback, and I told Senator Comfort I would give her some feedback. Did you want that discussion in the future to take place with MassDOT at a select board meeting? Or it would still have to be posted if you're all there, but Perhaps we could have a site visit in advance of a select board meeting, so in January we're not standing out in a blizzard. Okay. Thoughts? Other thoughts? Yeah, I and mean, I'm perfectly fine too if it to if it makes it more effective because you can stand there watching people blow through this thing, and that Every might morning. be more impactful for DOT than um, if only one or two of us went to that. I'm, totally fine with that it doesn't have to be one or two at the site and then yeah and yeah because I, I, I'm also worried about Alex right. um, that noise of the traffic and trying to fill yeah, that exactly I will not please take an interrupt <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's what I'll propose is maybe more okay. in-depth with not having a quorum and right. I can and then through have an on-site visit with a few of us and mm -hmm. then a meeting great. inside to discuss what has been observed and mm -hmm. what options Okay, Thanks, yes. great. That's that's really helpful. And then uh, let's see. If, I'm sure I forgot some stuff, but I'll send you it uh, tomorrow. Um, Friday, uh, Tina Smith, who is the um, APR regional coordinator for this area, is putting on a webinar and what do you call it? Um, not a live chat. A watch party. So she's going to be doing that to let. To, notify, to um, educate farmers on a grant um, that is called the Dairy Farm Innovation Grant. And it's, some of the details is uh, uh, farm production, a range of projects across farm production and business operation models. Projects may address improvements in topics such as, but are in no way limited to switching breeds, creating new models for collaborative cooperative milk production, increased young farmer engagement, alternative business ownership management models, development of green technologies, farm scale appropriate technology improvements, or in creating a culture of continuous improvement. 
that's just a, a small list, but her, her ultimate gain is to educate all regional farmers on this. So uh, the, the library's hosting it Friday at one o'clock. Um, are the farmers separately notified individually so that she, they have their own mailing list. Okay. And I know I reached out to Denise and she had already heard about it. Okay. So Denise Barstow. So um, I, I think it's great. And uh, um, I'm really bringing it up so that if our, any farmers are watching that they would be aware of it. Just Great. to make sure we get that word out. Okay. So if you know anybody who would be interested, um, she's really looking for a collaborative application from um, a group of farmers to get this grant. Excellent. So, I think I remembered everything. Are there any announcements? We do have a couple. Okay. So I guess we'll start with the uh, passing of people. We have Peter Sidlowski, um, longtime resident of Hadley, that he passed away. So condolences to his family. Philip Day, um, condolences to his family. There was a Joseph Pizera from East Hampton, but his roots were here in Hadley, so condolences to his family also. We also have the fire department. Mike slipped out, so um, doing a, a, they're doing a, their Santa tour with Park and Recreation on Saturday, December 17th, and locations and times can be found on the Park and Recreation website. And Hadley Public Safety will also be doing the annual toy drive for Shriners Hospital, our Stuff a Truck Cram a Cruiser event, same day from 3 to 6 p.m. And folks can drop new unwrapped toys or gift cards at the fire station in front of the fire um, station bays. We also have the uh, police ongoing with their um, angels and uh, it's on their website also that you can um, take an angel and buy gifts for the family doesn't mean you have to buy all of them but you can buy some and they'll substitute with other donations that do come in so uh, if anybody wants to participate in any of these activities we'd love to have you thank you any other announcements all right we will adjourn this meeting and go back into executive session Make a, somebody somebody needs to make a motion to reconvene. Executive session, not to reconvene. Okay, I'll make a motion to convene into executive session, and we will not, it, for the purpose of contract negotiations, uh, we will not reconvene in open session after. You may I have a second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Do you have to do roll call?